Hello everyone! Um, if you're watching this, that means we've hit 20k subscribers. So thank you guys so much. Uh, at the time of recording this video, we're at about 17 and a half k, I yeah. would say. Um, but we wanted to film ahead of time to compensate for time it would take to edit and post in a proper manner. But future Altoff and Chris, thank you guys heavily. Yes, we thank really you so much. We really appreciate you guys. And yes, and we'll be giving more thanks later in this video, but just want to say it up top, this is really big for us. Yeah. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A to celebrate, and you guys submitted us a lot of cool questions, and we're going to be going through them. Also, if any of these questions apply to you guys, please feel free to answer them in the comments down below. Our first round of questions were submitted by our patrons, and the first one is by Johnny Gadfly, um, and he asked, How did you dudes meet? Um, we've been asked this question a couple times, actually. I, first off, I like that people call us dudes. Like, I like our audiences. Like, you know, hey, sup, dudes? Yeah, like, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Because <laughs> we, we didn't, like, I mean, we say stay nice dudes, but, like, yeah. we don't actively think about, like, oh, people should call us yeah, dudes. Yeah, we're the dudes, you know, but. <laughs> right, but it just caught on. And it's yeah. kind of great. And I'm like, all right, cool, I'll go with it. We'll take it. <laughs> Back in 2017, I moved to L.A. You were already here. And uh, I moved to this, like, shared house that kind of operated as, like, a frat house. You know, it was a cheap place to live. I wasn't the richest person moving to L.A., so I just needed a quick place to stay. And I was like, I'll move out soon. So I happened to get the room that Chris was in. And um, I arrived in the night, so I didn't see Chris right away. And I woke up the next morning, and Chris was there. And he kind of just waved to me. He's like, oh, did you just move in? Like, I saw your name, like, on the plate or something over the bed that you were going to move in. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm all top. You're like, I'm Chris. And you very quickly said that, like, I'm a screenwriter or whatever. Because I told you that I moved, uh, like, from out of town. Yeah. I told you, I'm into filmmaking. That's why I'm here. <laughs> we sound so childish. You know, I'm into filmmaking. I'm into screenwriting. We were so naive and innocent. <laughs> and then, like, that same day, and I was in the living room. And you just asked me, hey, do you want to go get some In-N-Out or something like that? And then, like, we just went. Yeah. And that was really cool because I knew no one in L.A. I had no family members, knew new friends, and you just immediately invited me. And I was like, cool, I'm just going to go to In-N-Out with this guy. I felt very L.A. because I'd never been. Yeah. And yeah, so I was yeah, like, yeah. wow, I'm doing the most L.A. thing. I'm just meeting this guy who has tattoos who's like, let's go to In-N-Out. <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah. At the time in my life, I needed a bro friend because I was going through a breakup, and that's how I ended up in that house. To begin with, I was moving out. I saw the opportunity. I just thought you were cool. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go to In-N-Out. We're hanging out, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. And the next thing you know, we were both had very similar taste in movies. And we are both dorky and goofy. And it was really cool. Next question is by Stephen Tolput. He says, hi, guys. What's your favorite genre of film and your favorite year? I don't want to be that guy, but I really don't have one. I, I accept, like, all types of movies as long as it's good. The one I connect to the most, I think because of... Like, I was raised with a lot of Bollywood movies, you know, with me being Indian. And then also just movies in general that I, like, rewatch a lot are action comedies. Mm -hmm. I love Police Story, like the J Jackie Chan stuff. I grew up watching, like, Rush Hour a lot. Um, Bollywood movies are a lot of them. A lot of the ones that I grew up with are, like, action comedies. Yeah. So um, that's probably my favorite genre. But again, I'm like you where I'm just like... I watch so much stuff it's hard to pinpoint but like i guess i'll pick that one kind of thing you know okay. so year, do you have a favorite year yeah favorite year 1994 yeah <laughs> like yeah it is yeah uh, it but... just I, I mean like i i it makes sense completely <laughs> for sure um you can list off like a couple of the movies that are from there. um obviously pulp fiction mm -hmm. the lion king forrest gump clerks <laughs> clerks was that year yeah wow that's i, I didn't know that one yeah so 94 was one that came to mind because it's like the one that everyone talks about because yeah. it's, there's so many of our favorite movies are from that year. I wanted to pick one of just like what's what's something recent that was kind of like unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, pick, I'll go with 2019. I kind of saw that one coming as yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I thought that would be like a surprise. No, no, no. 2019 was an amazing year for movies too. You got uh, Avengers Endgame. Yep. Came out that year, which was huge. I mean, you and I have seen that movie so many times. Obviously, like everyone in this world, we love that movie. Um, but then you also had movies like Parasite. Mm -hmm. like, I was going to say Parasite. Um, you haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, but Jojo Rabbit, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I'm going to be frank with you. I've seen that movie so many times now that it might be up there as like my top three Tarantino. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, 2019 is one where I'm like... Those are, like, in the recent times, some of my favorite movies have come out of that place. Yeah, perfectly reasonable, man. Yeah. Thomas St. Clair asks, How did you decide to move from short scripted comedy to reactions or reviews? 
Do you have experience in writing or comedy before the channel? I ask because you both seem to understand comedy writing and structure quite well. Well, thank you for that. Um, We're comedians. I'm no, <laughs> just kidding. So to answer the first part of the question of why we switched to doing reactions, because I don't know if you guys know, but we used to do a lot more scripted content and short films. And basically our original view for Nice Dude was to be kind of a hub for filmmaking. We wanted to be like filmmakers that were making stuff on YouTube, but eventually use that as a launching pad to make bigger stuff. Yeah, that was the initial idea. And that's how we first talked about it. And we did that for a while. And we ended up doing like vlogs where we talked about the projects we did or, you know, Q and A's with the actors. And, you know, we did that kind of stuff. And I mean, like for almost a year, we made like weekly videos every week. We would do one of those. Yeah. And like almost every month we'd have a new short film come out. Like we were pretty dedicated. It wasn't half-assed like we were still like putting the same amount of work yeah but it just wasn't getting like that many results like people to be frank just weren't watching yeah yeah and the, which is okay by the way that's not like a you know no yeah. that's totally fine if people aren't interested they don't have to watch but we were learning how youtube works you know totally we just found that once we tried doing the reaction after we did the birdemic one and we kind of just did them every now and then for fun we found that those are the only types of videos that people really enjoyed and i think we felt like ourselves the most yeah, and we had the most fun doing, and we were most proud of when we actually uploaded them and looked. Like, Damn, we we did a good job on the edit of that video or the perform. You know, <laughs> the next part of the question says, "Do you have experience in writing or comedy before the channel?" Um, for me, uh, I went to school for screenwriting, so I do enjoy story structure and um, whatever you want to call it, story beats, and you know, whatever, right? Act one, two, three, and character arcs and all that. Yeah, screenwriting. Screenwriting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Thomas St. Clair asked another question of, if you can meet any director, past or present, who would it be and why? I'd like you to go first in this one because, you know, it's probably the quickest. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I think, obviously I have like my favorite filmmakers, but I don't know if I'm going to pick those just because I was like, I, I want to know who would be fun to like hang out with. Two people come to mind. Okay. Um, one is John Carpenter. Okay. Yeah, yeah I feel that's like a great one. He probably has the best stories when it comes to like uh, boots on the ground filmmaking, just really getting it done. Like, like the scrappy style that he used to do films. And arguing at. with the studios. And, yeah. and have amazing stories where he yeah. did studio films that flopped and he was like, yeah, that was a crazy time. And I've seen interviews with him where he's super blunt and honest about his process sure, yeah. and i'm like oh man i just love to talk to him he'd be such a cool hang uh another person for very similar reasons is robert rodriguez okay yeah yeah that, that's a good one i've seen that sh uh, show on netflix the chef show with john favreau where he basically cooks with his uh chef pal and he did an episode with robert rodriguez and robert rodriguez invited him over to his house where he made them like homemade pizza, these cauliflower pizza. And he's like, yeah, I make chocolates too. And he's like, I make my guests come in and draw on this big sketch pad. Like he's like a, he's like a creative through and through. Yeah. But he's like a huge people person. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, that, that guy, like that guy I want to hang out with. Yeah. For me, this is a little basic. So bear with me, but I would say George Lucas. Oh I my wanna, God. I, yes. wanna, I feel like I would just, I feel like him and I would get along so well. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I just, I would, I feel like he has such a dry sense of humor and I just love it because he, he's so not jaded by Hollywood. Right. And like, wouldn't you like want to just lean in every time he starts talking? Because yeah. you're like, okay, what does he have to say? Yeah. Like, Because like sometimes in interviews, the things that come out of his mouth are just oh, insane. Yeah. And yeah, he just seems like he's easy to get along with too. <laughs> Even when you see like some of the BTS of um, making the Star Wars prequels. He seems so mellow. He's just very dry with his humor again and just very like, oh yeah, no, uh, that, that looks unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Hopefully it'll work. Oh, that's such a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> John Walter or Walther asks, do you have a favorite cult movie? And if you do, what is it? You can go first on this. I have two. Um, one is The Room um, because... I, I haven't really shared this a lot on YouTube, but I am a huge fan of The Room. I've been to like four or five different screenings of it. I've met Tommy Wiseau twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a huge The Room dork. If you become, I have a copy of the script. If you are fortunate enough to become Chris's friend, then he will make it a point to be like, if we're going to be proper friends, we got to go to the screening of The Room. Like That's like a big staple. <laughs> it's like my initiation into yeah. my life. You know? I remember you took me to a screening of The Room. Yeah. And yeah, that was a big moment. Um, so, okay, so The Room's one of them. The other one is Clerks. Um, That's a perfect one, yeah. I, I love Clerks. That's another movie I resonate with a lot. For me, it's the Evil Dead movies. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. The whole trilogy. Um, I haven't seen um, Army of Darkness. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. I forget. But I've seen Evil Dead 1 and Evil Dead 2. And uh, those movies, uh, for obvious reasons, right? Um, you haven't seen Evil Dead 2, which we plan to do a movie reaction on that someday. So before you start commenting, we're already thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, we're ahead of you guys on that one. <laughs> uh, we've seen Evil Dead 1. I think the reasons are pretty obvious, right? I think the stuff that I connect to really well is that, man, these guys just went to a cabin when they were so young yeah. and just made a movie. Yeah. And I feel mm-hmm. like Evil Dead, especially the first one, is one of those movies where you're just like, God damn, I want to make movies. That looks so cool. That's true, yeah. yeah. It's so creative and easy. He makes it look so easy, Sam Raimi. Well, that's exactly... He makes yeah. it so easy, but it still feels impressive. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that's Sam Raimi in general, where you're like, yeah, I could do that, and then you're like, oh shit, but he's so talented. Benjamin Moore asks, would you guys be willing to get a P.O. box... Uh, Patreon members could send you guys movies to watch, kind of like what Game Grumps used to do back in the day, but with movies instead of video games. Could be pretty cool and might encourage more Patreon subscribers. That's an interesting idea. I've n- I mean, a lot of YouTubers end up getting P.O. boxes, and, you know, the, the, sometimes they do unboxing videos and, you know, whatever. Um, that's an interesting idea. I guess we'll have to have to think about that one more. <laughs> and, yeah, I have really no long answer for this. I'd be open to do that in the future. Yeah, I think it probably had come when we start doing this full time. Um, right now we're... We got our little day jobs, and that sounds like a lot to pay for and manage and keep track of. So we yeah. got it. It's just a matter of um, time management. Yeah, it's definitely something we'd be interested in, though. Threadbomb asks: Sometimes one of you has seen the movie before. How much of the previously seen movies do you generally remember? Um, it usually it's me, so I'll take this one. It really varies. Um, usually, what happens is I'll remember vague scenes or beats but it'll basically feel like a first time watching why which is why sometimes when we're reacting i'll be like wait wait what's he gonna do or oh is he gonna put it there you know it's because it's me trying to remember and i genuinely forgot what happened because i'm indian i was raised with a lot more bollywood movies so it's funny a lot of the classic 80s movies that people grew up with as kids i didn't grow up with yeah so it turns out that a lot of the movies we react to is like yeah i've never seen this it's crazy yeah um yeah. on twitter underscore fire and flame underscore asks what's the first movie you fully remember seeing and does it still hold up one is the first movie i remember seeing in the theaters and that's finding nemo okay but the first movie i remember seeing this indian movie called Hamsat Sate, which was like this big banner Indian movie with full of stars. It was a big family feel-good movie that I think a lot of kids my age grew up with. It was a big 90s hit. For me, I remember I owned VHS tapes and used to just watch them on repeat as a kid. Mm -hmm. And so the farthest back I can really remember is probably the first Toy Story movie. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah. That's probably what the first movie I've seen is. Which is like one of your favorite movies. I fucking love Toy Story, yeah. Fire and Flame also asks, what's a movie wrecked by critics and audiences you still love? You can go first. <laughs> I know, but you... It's like a standoff. <laughs> Do you want to answer? Yeah, yeah, This is like... Um, so, this is a movie that is not good that I don't recommend. I just want to make that crystal clear. I'm I the know, same way with my movie. I know this movie is not good, but it holds a special place in my heart from a nostalgia perspective, and I own this movie on DVD. Right. It's uh, The Hot Chick. <laughs> uh, with, with Rob Schneider. It's not a great movie. I, I'm not going to tell people to watch it. Like, you know, I'm going to stand by this movie. But it's not a good movie that I just... I just like watching it because it's just kind of a comfort food nostalgia thing for me. Well, it's one of those disposable <laughs> comedies, too, where you're like... I'll Super just, disposable, yeah. I'll just slap this on. Yeah. It's like, I don't need to think. Okay, well, speaking of Rob Schneider, uh, let's transition into a, a Happy Madison movie that I really enjoy. <laughs> I already know what it is, man. Yeah, this is... <laughs> We've had, like, borderline full-blown arguments about this movie. I you go ahead, tell them, tell them. really like Grown Ups. I, I've i seen that movie five or six times all the way through. I watched... I didn't, wait, I didn't know you've seen it five or six I, times. I still laugh when, like, Rob Schneider comes in with his old grandma girlfriend and the Saskatchewan Canadian built, like, uh, muscle dude yeah. that all the girls are fawning over, but he has, like, a very high-pitched accent. It like, just tickles a funny bone of yours. I it just... I don't know. Hey, I, I'm no better. I, I just said the hot chick, you know, so I can't I can't criticize your take, you know. <laughs> right. I just like I don't know, I get made fun of it all the time, and it's just it's just this is a safe space, you know. You guys, <laughs> this get, is a safe space. You guys get to know a little bit more about me. Yeah, today. <laughs> I know, right? Big Marvel fan 07 noob asks, "What did you both do before this YouTube gig?" Um, we're still doing the same thing. <laughs> we're not doing this full time. Yeah, I think that's really important to mention that this is like still kind of like a side hustle for us. I mean, obviously we're working really hard to make it a full time thing, but yeah, to be completely transparent, it's still like something that we're working on. Kate Stanley asks, what are your favorite movies that you haven't watched on the channel? So just 
Fire off some of your favorite movies. I guess my favorite movie ever is The Truman Show. Oh, yeah, I guess Truman Show, Predator, Robocop. That's a good three. Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, mine are... Um, I have a handful, so I'm just going to just rapid fire a couple. Jurassic Park, The Lion King, uh, Pulp Fiction. Sorry. <laughs> now it's like so basic to say Pulp Fiction. I'm just kind of like, yeah, bear yeah, with yeah. me here. <laughs> um, uh, Spider-Man for the Sam Raimi movies, you know, one yeah. and two. That's like a couple I can name off. I second all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delta Nugs asks, who would you both choose to play yourselves in a movie yourself excluded? So I have to pick, you know, an actor for you and you have to pick one for me. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll go first. So I didn't go off looks. I didn't go off race. I didn't go off any of that. I'm, I don't mind if you do, obviously. But I just went a different direction. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's go off of like attitude and tone. And I, I, I'm, I would choose Bill Murray, like young Bill Murray. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> oh, man. if you yeah. watch Ghostbusters, Venkman is Chris's sense of humor. It's his sensibilities. I'm not saying – now, that's not saying you're an asshole. You're or not a sleazeball. Saying, you're not <laughs> sleazeball. Yeah, yeah. It's not the negative stuff. It's just that, like, dry sense of humor. I'm like, flattered, man. Yeah. So my answer for you um, – I, I, I assumed you probably went the other direction, but, like, I just wanted to go – Wait, to, what's the other direction? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of bald bearded dudes. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't. I didn't go off of looks. Okay, okay. Um, necessarily. Just hear me out. There, there, there is attitude. I'm so excited. And I'm sorry if I butcher the pronunciation of this, but N.T. Rama Rao Jr. Yes. <laughs> from the, RRR. From the co-star of RRR. <laughs> yes. Because when we watched that movie, one of the first things we were like, "Oh, that guy's you," and the other one's me. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, so if you haven't seen RRR, there's uh, it's. It's about two best friends, and that's all I'll say if you haven't seen the movie. And one of them is like the very like um, hearty, sensitive one. And Chris and I, when we were watching RRR, we were like, oh, you're that guy. <laughs> Dude, I'm, so, I'm thrilled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cliff Smelly asks, have you recovered from the cat in the hat yet? No. <laughs> I know. In all seriousness, for each of you, what's your favorite director and your favorite movie by that director? You might not expect this answer necessarily, but I think this director has the most consistently good quality stuff that like means something to me. Uh, Richard Linklater. Oh, okay, cool. Um, That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I honestly didn't know what direction yeah. you were going to go with this. Favorite movie by that director, School of Rock. I fucking love School of Rock. That movie's badass. Yeah. I love the Before trilogy, too. Yeah. But um, School of Rock always holds a special place in my heart. That's a great choice. You like That was early on in our friendship where you talked about Richard Linklater a lot to me. Where mm. you're like, that guy just makes so much, so many good stuff. Yeah. And it's like, he makes it look so easy. My favorite filmmaker is, it's the most basic answer ever, but my favorite filmmaker director is Steven Spielberg. I um I like filmmakers and I like movies that aren't afraid to be sincere. They're not afraid of emotion, and I feel like Spielberg's the best at that. Yeah, no. no. And I feel like the movie that just encapsulates all of that, even though there's a lot of movies that I like of his, is probably E.T. E.T. is one of those movies that like gets me. Every time I watch it, I just saw it in the movie theater about like a couple weeks ago because it's it was re-released on IMAX. Almost every other scene made me cry. Like literally tear up. I was wearing a mask and I was just like, God damn it. <laughs> uh. Artst asked, what movie you have you watched that surprised you the most? Not jump scare surprise, but it turned out to be much better or worse than you thought it was going to be. I'll go first on this. Uh. Again, guys, I don't want my movie taste to be tarnished with this video. Yeah, don't worry. I'll take care of it off camera. <laughs> like, if he deserves to get roasted, I'll roast him. <laughs> Again, I, I have to say, I'm a huge Adam Sandler fan. I am... Who be Halloween? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh my god. I like, I've seen that movie now three times. And I... I it like the jokes land for me. They just do like almost every joke I laugh at. Like it's and it's just Adam Sandler being like, I'm just gonna do a comedy. Mine has to be Cabin in the Woods. Um, oh, that's that movie good. was nothing like I expected to be. I know most people who watch it don't know what like a no one expects a movie like Cabin in the Woods. I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but we highly recommend it. And that movie's it's an out there movie. Sam J H asks, of all the movies you've reacted to so far, which are your favorites? Oh, um, I think mine, for me, it's really easy. Um, my favorite is The Thing. Okay. It was the first movie that we reacted to on our channel that was, like, actively, like, really good. And we were just like, oh, we should react to more good movies. Like, Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what started that a little because bit. Because we were, you know, reacting to, like, Twilight. We were re reacting to, like, Samurai Cop. A lot of, like, really good... Notably bad movies to react to, yeah. But it was like, oh, my God. 
This was yeah. like, we can still react to great movies. Yeah. So that one holds a special place in my heart. Sure. I really had a hard time answering this one just because I like all of the movies a lot that we've reacted to. And now that you mentioned The Thing, that might be one of mine too. Um, my other answer was going to be Monty Python, funny enough. Oh, yeah. Because... Just because, you, like you said, I love those like comedies that can just comedies tend to entertain me thoroughly, and I feel like I can just rewatch that movie, and it's like a great comfort food comedy. And that's another one of those that's like Spaceballs, uh, where it's a joke per second. Yeah, absolutely. Moo Cow Love asks, "What is the process of getting the videos together? Like, how long do you spend on filming, editing, putting the whole thing together, and so on?" Um, really, I, I would say it takes about like eight to ten days for us to, from shooting all the way up to uploading. It takes us to finish a video. Um, yeah. that's really accounting for the time because we both have day jobs and really it's a matter of our availability of like, sometimes we'll have this going on one night or we'll be at work this day and I go in early and I can't do, you know, a lot of it's just making the time to edit it and finish it after we shoot. Um, but we shoot once a week and then whenever we can finish the video is when we upload it pretty much. <laughs> Filming is probably the quickest part of the process. Um, editing is 99% of the video. Absolutely, yeah, they're, they're a beast. Um, I edit the assembly cut where basically I trim out all of the dead spaces and everything that we think is good. You sync sound. And I line up the sound and all that. And then um, once that's finished, you come along and then you punch up. You do everything else. You do all the zoom ins, you do the subtitles, you switch back and forth between the wide shot and then what's showing the movie and the screen recording, yeah. the slow-mo replays, all that good stuff is this guy right here. Yeah, and we have obviously a revisions process where like I'll finish the cut, Chris will sit down with me, we'll watch it together, uh, he'll give me a round of notes, and then uh, we'll go from there, and then we'll do a final rewatch, and then that's that. Pretty much like the process of making any short film or movie or something, you know? Mickey DeVito asked what our favorite scary movies are and what our thoughts are on the horror genre overall and its resurgence in the last few years as a legit medium yeah that's a great question yeah um i think for me i recently got into horror like recent as in like probably three years ago i was a big scaredy cat throughout my childhood stayed away from horror and then it was actually after meeting you um and this wasn't directly the reason but i was just like i grew up and i was like oh horror movies are actually really good too they're yeah. not just like jump scares my favorite my two favorite horror movies i think are uh alien and uh, The Exorcist. Okay. Uh, which is what we reacted to on this yeah. channel. And I think Alien, for obvious reasons, no matter how many times I see it, when I watch that movie, I'll still be very tense. Um, it's still just filled with dread. Um, and every time I'm just like, how the hell are they going to kill this thing? Yeah. And it's like, feels impossible. Exorcist, because it just genuinely terrifies me. Yeah, like I watched. No, that. I know that reaction. We that reaction was not hyped up or uh, play like played up. Jesus Christ! Oh God! Oh, oh yeah. God! Oh fuck! I hate seeing that shit. It, it, that that reaction was pretty real. It was pretty funny. I had <laughs> watched the edit. You were pretty embarrassed of your reaction. Well, because I you're going through. I hadn't been that scared in a while with a movie. Yeah. Favorite scary movies? Um, off the top of my head, probably Alien as well. Hereditary is up there too. That movie is like genuinely disturbing for me horror nowadays especially is like kind of my personal only source of original stories you know that's true and so that's true because nowadays there's uh, you know i don't want to sound like an old man and be like you know everything is remakes but it, it's true there's like pretty much half of hollywood right now is just it's disney remakes or adaptations or sequels horror is also the genre where people are still going to the movie theater to see it mm-hmm Tiv or Tiv asks, what do you think of reaction channels generally? And have you seen any others that you personally enjoy or think have some good ideas? I know people make fun of them a lot. So what do you think of what you're doing? I personally love it. I love that like movie reactions became a big thing after quarantine mm -hmm. because it's just like, I love like watching movies with people. I love showing pe movies to people. That's like a big part of like how I enjoy movies. So I love the idea of reaction channels really blowing up, and I feel like I hope they don't go away. You know, I think that yeah. they're they're great. I think people and myself included like the vicarious feeling of like showing someone a movie, like oh, dude, you know, to my buddy, like I gotta show you this movie, you know, and and you kind of watch their reaction while they're watching it. You know, it's a fun feeling, and I think that's kind of where it comes from for yeah. reaction channels. Yeah, I mean, I have a handful of reaction channels that I like. I guess I can just name some names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Natalie Gold is up there. I probably she's probably the one that I've most frequently came back to and watched. Mm -hmm. um, Ashley Burton is great too. Yeah. Um, I like Brandon likes movies. Um, I'm sure you got you guys probably watch them too. <laughs> Matthew Loss asks, have you guys started putting up full movie reactions on Patreon? I would pay to see some of those. If not, is there a reason you don't do that? 
Um, so we tried at one point. <laughs> um, the truth is because we watch the movie with the audio on in the background, they're not separate. Most people who watch them have headphones and separate and can control the volume of it. Um, we basically kept getting copyright claimed and the videos were taken down when we were trying to do them on Patreon for a bit. Um, yeah. And it sucked. We were trying to make it work, but basically we just don't have a proper tech setup to edit properly to separate the sound and do that to make a proper commentary track if we wanted to do a full length reaction right and trust me when i say like we really want to figure it out yeah um, so it's, it, moving forward we do plan on making it work yeah in the future it's going to come you guys will be the first to know we really are thinking about it for now uh, we're doing on our patreon like uh commentary tracks for movies we have already seen but we're really passionate about um we've done empire strikes back nightcrawler lion king toy story but like in the future we really want to do like full movie reactions i think that'd be like that'd be great astrofish asks chocolate or vanilla Ch chocolate oh god you have For a me, take on it yeah i mean yeah chocolate <laughs> and vanilla is fucking delicious man it's, you got to think about that a little bit chocolate or vanilla really yeah it's chocolate for sure okay all right Okay. Why well, are you being so hostile towards me that I have to think about it? <laughs> I'm just like, when you're getting ice cream, you're going to get chocolate or vanilla? It depends. It depends. If it's just plain Jane vanilla, there are, chocolate's heavy sometimes. You know? Sometimes I want something a little lighter. You know, French vanilla, vanilla bean. Are you kidding me? Vanilla okay. bean's the shit. Okay, but let's just say bare bones. I'm not talking, when I say chocolate, I'm also not saying chocolate mousse. We're talking about just pure chocolate or vanilla. Yeah. Just plain Jane at face value, chocolate, sure. You mm -hmm. know? Vanilla, I like with like a like vanilla is a good starting point to add other stuff to. Okay, that's fair. You know, that's fair, hundred percent. So we hope that answers your guys' questions properly. Thank you guys so much for being part of our channel and subscribing. It's really really special to have a community. Uh, like we mentioned in this video, Chris and I have been doing this for a very long time. It doesn't seem that long in like when you look at the years we've been doing it, but just it just feels long because we put so much we work into it. We pumped so many videos, man. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, it's only this past year, really, where we feel like, wow, we've gained a community of people that like are excited to watch our videos. And it yeah. kind of just... It's so exciting for both of us when we put a community post up teasing the next movie reaction. And, and we, see you guys get all excited. Yeah. And, <laughs> and seeing, start quoting it and acting out scenes in the comments. And we don't respond to it only for the reason of just like, let's see how excited they get. Let's see what quotes they do. You know what I mean? Because we we love people being thrilled for our next video. And we get heartwarmed when we see comments like, I love your enthusiasm. Or mm -hmm. um, your, this reaction is my favorite reaction that anyone's done for this movie. Or you guys already watched this ahead of time and you're faking it. Right. <laughs> right. Those are great too. <laughs> God, I wish I was that good of an actor. Um, <laughs> no, but like in all seriousness, it like yeah. really means a lot. So thank you guys again for 20,000 subscribers. That's pretty awesome. And thank you to our patrons for supporting us. And thank you to you guys for watching this video. Stay nice, dudes. Hey, everyone. Well, uh, what the f*** do I say? Hey, everyone. I'm Chris. I'm Alta. And together we're Nice Dude Productions. Okay. <laughs>